Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 93. Today is December 12th, 2023, and I want to get on the podcast to speak directly to my individuals who are dealing with the barriers of communication with individuals who are doing their basic bare minimum in life. In life, we're going to see that there are some people that are just comfortable. Wherever they are, they're comfortable. Uh, If they are, you know, doing the bare minimum and the basics, then what's happening is they're blaming everyone for what they can't get because of the envy that they see of people striving and thriving to be more, to do more, to elevate themselves, to move them to higher areas of living. So sometimes that looks a little unfamiliar to the basic person. The basic person who sees people as entrepreneurs going through life with the highs and lows and trying to deal with life on life terms and realizing that, you know, insanity is, you know, doing things you don't feel comfortable with doing. These basic individuals will look at entrepreneurs and leaders And people trying to do more, to be more, to have more as crazy. They're like, why would you do that when all you have to do is depend on someone else? Or all you have to do is marry into someone who has money. Then you don't have to do that much work. Or uh, you have to fake it till you make it. Well, see, entrepreneurs and leaders, these are things we do not want to consider and trying to make these basic individuals see that the way we're taking our lives is the way it should be. It could never happen. There will be a misjustice of communication on all levels at that particular point. So what I'm learning in this lesson myself specifically is that for the basic individual who just wants to do the bare minimum in life, they are not going to look at the person who's doing more as someone that they should emulate or follow. So basically they're going to put up what is known as a, a barrier that says you're crazy. You're not real because no one does what you do the way you do it. So that keeps them normal. That's just their way of understanding that they're normal. And yes, they are in their basic mundane group of individuals who are absolutely, you know, doing nothing. These are your your kleptomaniacs. These are your uh, drama starters. These are your depressed individuals, individuals who, you know, may not know that they're there, but they're still actually creating chaos amongst themselves inside, internally. They're, they're, they're emulating and then showing out in the reality of world. So basically we are looked at as insane because there's nothing that these people are going to be willing to do unless they have that inheritance to come up or they win the lottery or they're not going to do it from the the hard work, blood, sweat, and tears that it takes to make a society thrive and, and, and flourish. And so because of that, leaders, we are looked at as insane. Now, on the flip side, when we look at individuals who are living out of a cardboard box, who are doing the bare minimum, who are not taking advantage of the opportunities given and afforded to them. We as leaders and entrepreneurs and developers and individuals who look at this in a common way, we'll look at those people as insane. Why would you be out here in the freezing cold when you could go and get a job, do the right thing, work hard on mental health, you know, use the the barriers that have been given to you as, you know, obstacle ladder steps to step out of it and elevate oneself to a better position. But it's hard 
when you're stuck in a pattern of behavior. And that's insanity. We understand that on this side. Now, we've given accolade to those basic individuals who say that, you know, some people do do the most. Okay, fine. Now we're going to take it and we're going to share that the entrepreneur and leaders in our society have to deal with these individuals as clients. We have to deal with these individuals as um, employees. So when we come across this situation as leaders and entrepreneurs, I've learned that it is important to allow people to show you who they are. Yes, elevate your level of consistency to everyone. And anyone who follows Chronicles of a Nonprofit know that Dr. Shine will elevate specifically to number six. And then from that point, if I need to go down and relax, I will. But if I need to heighten it, I'm already at that level. So in that, what that means is that is a protective barrier that I use in order to make sure that people understand who I am as well because I'm already at their level and when you elevate to a higher level of ignorance then it's time to go immediately and by the time an individual gets to that point they don't have enough time to expand to have an engagement with ignorance in order for by that time it's you're gone there's nothing that can be done and it's over but when you engage with the the uh positions of insanity then it creates that engagement and now you have a reason and now it elevates and then it escalates and then it goes into a way or a place that we're not trying to dig to go. So basically I've learned that (laughs) when, when, when a person calls an individual insane or crazy or, you know, narcissistic, or they throw these words around today in today's world, what I expect to do when, as a leader is to look at the person who's saying that I am that thing. And if they're the basic group of people in society, I'll understand 100% that this is what it is. They're seeing me as the opposition to their basic functions. They don't know beyond that. And they may be intelligent. They may be, because I was at that point at one point in time, you know, and, and uh, they may be triggered. They may be depressed. They may be whatever, Whatever it is that they are, they may be looking at someone else in an envious way. They may be looking at someone else in a jealous way. But there is something preventing and stopping them from looking within. And all of these other barriers are distractions. And in distraction, no matter if you're on the side of the basic individual or the elevated individual, you're going to see insanity somewhere. So how do we handle this? As entrepreneurs and leaders, I myself, I handle it based upon individual status. How people look at me and judge me and decide whether they're going to try me, because you got to remember the basic individual, the group of the normal, 85% of society is used to getting their own way but they're standing in their own way as well. So as long as someone is catering and taking care of them, it's just like a kid that never grows up. You take them to the mall and tell them that they can get three things. And uh, every time you do that, they always come out with four things. They're going to try to come out with five things, six things, and so forth and so on to the point where they want the whole, the whole mall. So these are things that we need to be mindful of. And I am putting this on this podcast today for historical purposes, because these are things that I'm dealing with in my own professional world. And I'm saying to myself, the basics, fundamentals of the 85% is on survival mode. They're in survival mode. How can they do this? How can they maneuver through this? How can they justify And many of them have burned many bridges. They believe that 
every individual is sufficient to play the game and the role of the history of who they are. And when they recognize that this person is buying into the story, they'll continue to keep being the victim. They'll continue to keep being the one that everyone, you know, shuns. But they're not looking at the fact that the inner being is what's stopping people from wanting to be around drama. That's just that. This is the time in which we're living, especially if we're mature and wise individuals. We're not trying to live in that chaotic moment of stress all day, arguments all day, picking all day just to get what you want because that is a distraction. Believe me, you, 85% of society as a basic structure of individuals are not going to sit back and say, let me go pick on this person for no reason at all, just because I want to feel some energy. Maybe 12% out of the 85 may do that because there's some mental whatever. They're not even, they're not even conscious enough to know that they got to, you know, do something for a reason. Okay. But the other percentage will sit back and try to get you distracted in conversation to see how much you're willing to give them, especially if you're a giver. If you're a giver and you're a caring individual, these basic functioning robotic individuals will try their best just to see what they can get from you. And now they're pissed because you choose not to give to them specifically. Mm, I'm a giver. So me, myself, personally, I give to who I want to give to. That's my donation to society. So if I do something, I'm doing it on a scale where everybody's going to benefit. Now, if I were to take all of the money that I would give to all the people in which I will service as a community representative and give that to one person, that person would be happy and they would come to me every day and they would demand that I give them this. They would demand that there's a reason. They, they would tell me that uh, they would distract me to the point where all I see is them because that's how survival mode works. So they're right. When a person says you're crazy, mm, yes, Crazy is outside of the sanity in which they live in. So that's really and truly a compliment. Okay. And it's all right because it's okay to be the one who is not as normal as everyone else, especially if it's on a negative side. So that's something I want you to pay attention to because these are the way that these demons use their vibration to get what it is they want. You may have children who demand that the parent take care of them to the degree of 50 and 60 years of age. And that's not good. That's not good. You train a child in a way that they should go, and then when they're older, they won't depart from it. So if you're training your child to be responsible, to be independent, there should be no way in hell that an adult that is 50 and 60 should still be having life issues to the point that they have to live with their parents to the degree where they lived with the parents since the age of 18 or 20. And by the time most people are 17 and a half, by the time most people are 15, they're actually more mature than some 28-year-olds. If they use their mind wisely and not allow someone else to intimidate or manipulate or to gaslight them to the point where they get, uh, what is that word, Um, where someone takes care of them Um, And then they become just a dependent. Then they sit back and they look and they see what other people have at their age. And then they're like, oh, I got to catch up. Now here comes the envy and the jealousy. And now here comes the pointing of the finger. Because guess what? That person did not put in position at the time. Now I sit back and I look at, you know, some of the people in housing. And I hate to say it, but... Housing has become a very 
creative means of income. You can put your number on a house in the hood and say, this is what it is, and it becomes that. But back in the day, when things were very, very inexpensive, you could get a house. I mean, even to this day, if you have the wherewithal, you can get a house and you can, you know, live in it, you know, build it up as you're living in it. And then it can become a million dollar home just by putting investment into a mortgage or a land contract. Now people are not even willing to do land contracts because they want residual income for the rest of their lives. So now we have another situation, another societal situation in the housing industry. So it's amazing. It's amazing how people maneuver and go through the life in which they choose to have for themselves. And it's also important to recognize that people will do things for their own benefit. Okay, we understand that. That's why it's vitally important to have ethics, morals, and values in the relationship with client base and business, period. Ethics is going to make the decision of the call between what is right and what is not. Now, if you go with that, other option of being right, then uh, then that's the cost that we have to pay. That's the cost that must be paid based upon what we choose as entrepreneurs and leaders. Okay, so this is a big topic here, and I wanted to just share it with those who care and for those who may be at that transition where they're busting out and growing out of their Uh, immature ways and they're growing and they're rising. So be very mindful to the basic individuals, the 85% that sit back and they think they have all the answers and everyone's crazy except for them. I would like you to sit back and think about the time in which you know you feel as though you want to elevate and you want to grow, but you have so many of your people that's so normal around you saying that if you grow, you're crazy. Think about this. What happens when you bust that uh, that plastic ceiling and you see the ladder and you rise up? People are going to fall off. So isolation is a good thing when you're trying to heal from that transition, that move up, because what's going to happen is you're going to find yourself more alone. You're going to find yourself more in a peaceful realm to where you can think clearer where there's not as many chaotic moments, yet people will still try to distract you because the goal is to make sure that you come back down to their level. But what you do as you rise is you keep going and be okay with being alone and heal yourself and move to the next level. And if you can't do it, if you're not strong enough, then it's going to be like the crabs in the barrel in the bucket and they're going to pull you right back down. And then now you got to deal with being put back into the crab bucket with everyone else after trying to elevate for them to talk about you. (laughs) So if you going up, you might as well keep going up. Do it while they're asleep. Do it while they sleep. And so that way, it's too much work for them to get to you by that time. Because guess what? They're not going to put in extra work just to get you to bring you back down. If you're too far away, they'll just sit down there on the base and just talk. Looking up, saying, and that's the universe saying that you have the same ability to rise up if you chose. Because the only way you're going is where you're looking. And if you're looking up, consistently watching other people, you have that same opportunity to be a success as everyone else. Just choose not to. So with that, thank you for being consistent. Thank you for being ready. Thank you for being on time. And guess what? Thank you for rocking in the shoes you're walking in because you're swagging it, baby. You're doing a damn thing. Keep it moving. Keep it popping because that's you. And guess what? It's only one you. No one else in this entire planet 
is like you. So keep it moving. Peace, and we'll see you next time.